everybody! Welcome to Drawing with Waffles! Today I'm drawing another Disney princess. I've been in a little bit of a funk and I just didn't know what to draw and... I went to my... well I don't actually have a list. <laughs> I'm just like all over the place right now. But I, I really haven't drawn all the Disney princesses yet, so I was like, might as well start checking them off, you know? <laughs> so, I really wanted to draw Princess Aurora or Briar Rose or Sleeping Beauty. She has three names. That's alright. Um... I've always considered her one of the prettiest princesses. I don't know, I just, I don't know, I love her face. And her dresses, every dress, and everything about her. Even though she has, like, very few lines, I still like her, so. It's alright. Um, so I really wanted to draw a girl, like, twirling around, so, like, the dress is just flying all over the place. Because I've never done that before. And I remember, like, I don't know, probably six years ago, I came across this picture on DeviantArt. I really don't remember who drew it, but it was, like, three princesses like in a row and they were all twirling in different directions and the dresses were like flying and I just thought it was the prettiest thing ever if anyone knows what I'm talking about <laughs> definitely link it to me I, I'd love to see it again I tried to find it I like googled it I know it was on DeviantArt but I just couldn't find it um but that was like my inspiration because I, I for some reason that was popping up in my head in the last couple days so I was like I think I need to draw something so I'm drawing well Princess Aurora in her I couldn't decide whether I wanted to draw the blue or the pink dress at the end, you know, when the fairies are, like, fighting over the color of the dress. I've always liked the blue one better, but I, I didn't know which one I wanted to draw her in, so I decided to draw her in, well, the blue one while it's changing into pink, or the pink one while it's changing into blue, either way. It's kind of the same thing. So, it's actually a multicolored dress, which I think is so pretty. Um, that's some, that, when I was little, that was, like, my favorite part of the movie was like was it at the beginning when they're making the dress for her and they're like fighting over it and then it's like two colors at once and I was like I can totally wear that you know it looks kind of messy but yeah well, that's what I'm talking about and so for her hair since she's spinning around her hair couldn't have been just like laying flat because then that would have thrown off the entire picture and just the motion of everything so I put her hair up in the air and then I decided to put some of it over in front of her mouth I'm not I mean, I don't usually like to cover the faces when I'm drawing, just because, you know, the face is really important, and it's usually where your eye looks first, is people's faces. But it really just helped with the whole, like, she's spinning around. It just made it look so much more, I don't know. I'm not trying to say realistic, but like, dynamic? I don't know. It's just, it looks like she's spinning now. <laughs> so, like, the hair's out of control. It's just everywhere. It's still got that, like, princess vibe, where there's not, like, a bunch of strands, like, in your face and in your mouth and up your nose. But... I think it, it, it works really well. Oh, yeah. So now I'm just adding all her little, like, petticoats. Is that what they're called? Like, the little skirts under the skirt that make your skirt, like, really fluffy. I decided to draw a bunch of those because I was looking at references of just Disney princesses spinning around at Disney World, like, the real ones that walk around. And they always had several layers, so I really wanted to make sure I included some of those. In the first sketch, if you'll notice, I just added, like, swirls, just, like, poofiness under her skirt. But I think this looks so much more realistic, and I like it a lot better. And it's just much more detailed, and yeah, I like it a lot better. And then her bottom skirt isn't as um, large as the top pieces, so it doesn't stick out as much. At least that was my idea behind it. So, And I had a lot of trouble with those feet, just where I wanted them to look. If you look at her body, that back leg should not be like twisted around like that. I do fix it, but just right now I just noticed it, and I was like, ooh, that's disgusting. <laughs> Um, doing that arm. So I'm just playing with the sizes of the different sections of the drawing and make sure it looks all good. And then I'm just shading in bits so that I can see how it's going to look. I think I actually had some gradients in here. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Just to like, I don't, at the point I didn't really feel like doing line art. Because you know when you like get to the point where it's about time to do line art and you're just sort of like, I don't really want to do this right now. So I was kind of like stalling myself by like sort of adding like colored but still being very, uh, desaturated so it's like all grays and whites but on oh, here I'm trying to fix that foot that looks much better but I didn't keep that one <laughs> I do this a few times I'm not I don't really remember which way it ends up looking well that one doesn't work no just get rid of that one Ooh. I hope that's not the one I left no okay it's not the one I, left. I just don't check so yeah I'm just doing the feet right now because that took me a while to get right because one of the foot one of the feet is way behind her, and one of them is way farther forward, so it was, I had to make sure that there looked like there was some kind of perspective. So yeah, now I'm doing the liner. Now if you notice, I don't know, you probably didn't notice, like, straight out right, but now you can see my brush while I'm drawing. There's this little circle, so it shows the size of my brush that I'm using. I have a question for you guys. Do you prefer being able to see the brush? Because I usually have it turned off where you can't see that brush. 
and halfway through um, halfway through recording this drawing, my live stream procaster pro procaster stopped working. Like it couldn't connect to the internet or something. I don't know if they finally just stopped supporting that program. It's really old. They have like a newer one now. So if I wanted, I could probably download that one. Um, I talk about it more in my what what do they call that? I don't know, but it's just like two. What screen recording software I use? There's, a, I have a whole video on that. I'll have it linked anywhere that there can be links, um, so you can check that out. Those are the two programs I use. I use Livestream Procaster and OBS, so Open Broadcasting Software. And so halfway through this drawing, like my Procaster stopped working, so I had to switch over to OBS. And I didn't have the brush turned off on OBS, so halfway through this speed paint, the brush just starts appearing, and you can see it. Um, I don't think it's that big of a problem. I just don't like having it there because there's times, I well, it's just, I feel like it's one more thing to look at and it's kind of distracting because you don't really need it. You can see the line being drawn without the brush. I'm not sure if you can turn it off in OBS, but I still thought I'd ask, like, do you like being able to see it or do you prefer like, not seeing it and just watching it draw itself? I guess that's just my question. Yeah. Oh, so while looking at references of like, girls twirling in big poofy dresses I noticed like well this makes sense but the top of the dress is going to stay closer to the body while you're twirling than the back of the dress because the back of the dress is so long there's lag and it's going to be like behind so it can't keep up so when you draw someone twirling and you're thinking about the motion that they're spinning in the dress closest to their like um, waist should be almost just with them and then what you want to do is take the section of the skirt that that's connected to and just twist it around the way that, the, well, the opposite way of that they're spinning, because it's behind, like it can't keep up. So I don't know if that makes sense while well, I'm trying to speak it or, or talk about it. But if you look at my drawing, I tried to keep that in mind while I was doing it. So you, yeah, and now I'm back to these stupid feet. <laughs> I, do, I don't even want to look at them anymore. But yeah, this is, I think, the pose I went with for the feet, and I kind of played with it a little bit more. Yeah, I still don't really like them, but they're much better than I had before. So. I'm not gonna complain, you know, as long as you're improving, even if it's just a little bit, it's pretty good. So, I'm not gonna complain. Stop complaining. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I just added that arm. No, I think it's time for the coloring, which I actually made a color key for this one, so you can see my color key. That color's not right. That's not the skin color I wanted. Okay, that's better. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I created a color key, and I decided since her, her dress is changing colors halfway. Why don't I just add magic sparkles? Because I like using magic, my magic sparkle brush that I created. So I decided to just use that to separate the two colors so it looks like the magic's changing the colors of the dress and it's just not a weirdly colored dress. I think it definitely helped with that. And that's something that making a color key really, you know, helps you do is to experiment with the colors and how you want it to look. And through making the color key, I decided how I was going to actually have it um, transfer from the pink to the blue or the blue to the pink. So it was all just experimenting and I think it worked really well. And now I have all the colors to use, so <laughs> that's a plus. So yeah, I decided to color it blue first. And then what I did was after I had finished coloring all the dress, all the blue parts of the dress, I merged all those layers. So I just had one layer with all the color of the dress. I duplicated it. And then I used the hue and saturation tools to just change the color. I could have probably just recolored it again, but I thought this would just be simpler and it would take less time, and it definitely did. So after I finished shading it, coloring it, everything, I just used the hue and saturation tools to change it to a pink color. And it took a little bit of playing around with the saturation and everything, and definitely the hue, and a little bit of the darkness and lightness, but well, too big of a deal. And I eventually got it to a color where I wanted it. So then I had two layers. So I had a layer that had the blue dress and I had a layer that had the pink dress. The pink dress was on top. And then I used layer masks to transfer, well, what's that? I don't know what the word you would use for that is. But I basically used the layer masks to just have it gradient into the two different colors. What's that? Blend, blend, that's a good word. <laughs> so I used that to make the colors blend together. And right now I'm coloring the hair. I really like your hair color, it's so pretty. And I like that in Sleeping Beauty, the colors, and you don't see this very often, but the colors of the people is darker than the line art. Usually you see the line art that's like a darker version of the color, but in this movie, like, her hair is like a dark blonde, and then her, her the lines in her hair are much brighter, more like saturated color, which I think is really cool. You don't see that very often, and I definitely like the way, it, I think they pull it off really well, it looks so cool. 
I love it. Although I still, for the crown, I used a darker color. I tried to use a lighter color, but it didn't quite work as well as I wanted it to. I think now I'm probably about to do the dress. Oh no, coloring the shoes. It's okay because I talked about the dress already, so I don't have to worry about that. This is a really long video. Oh my gosh. Oh, here I am. I'm doing the dress. So I changed it to this pink color, and then I used the I just used the layer masks to have it blend into different colors. I was trying to decide where to put it because I wasn't sure. Because with the color key, I really like the way that looks. I feel like there's there's really good contrast between the two colors. But since she's spinning, I can't do it quite as similar as that. So I decided to go with this. I do end up adding a little bit more blue to it, to that underskirt part. But for now, I'm doing that. And now I'm adding a background. And since I did that Avatar 20 Day Drawing Challenge, I'm much more comfortable with backgrounds. I'm not too much better at backgrounds, but I'm just more comfortable with the way they look. And I'm slowly improving, so it's okay. So I decided, you know what, let's add a background. Because I've already spent, I don't know, two and a half hours on this drawing. Why don't I add a background so that I could be a little bit more proud of it? So I just did this. <laughs> It's very, very simple. It's not like the greatest background in the entire world, but I'm just, I'm kind of happy with it. I just like the way the colors look. And I, I don't know, I think it turned out okay. It definitely looks like she's in a ball room and she's dancing and that was the purpose of the background. So I think it worked pretty well. Yeah. I just imagine like her prints, like spun her around. So she's spinning and still looking at the prints, this kind of thing. And then this is the finished illustration. If you like the way it turned out, you can check out some of my other drawings, and I, s I post speed paint videos every week, so, and some tutorials occasionally. So, if you like this, you can subscribe, or check out some of my other videos, and I'll see you guys all next week. Have a delicious evening from the Wampos! Bye!